Hi, it's Chris again, here to give you an update on medical school. So right now, uh, I just got home from finishing my last day of class as a first year. So officially now, the only thing that's standing in my way of being able to call myself a uh, second year medical student in MS2 is my final starting on uh, Tuesday of next week. So uh, that's what we're doing now, is basically studying for those. Um, that's about all that is going on right now for the remainder of uh, this week and next week until all my exams are finished on uh, on Thursday. So, uh, you know, going through a uh, stack of notes and um, making flashcards, all that kind of fun stuff to uh, finish out the uh, psychiatry part of uh, neuroscience. So that's what's going on right now with medical school. Um, so it's good to be done with uh, all the classes for first year. So first year classes are done. Uh, class time work-wise goes, um, I am... Uh, as close as I can get to being a second year student without having to take that test yet. So once that test is over with, uh, changing from an MS1 to an MS2 and ready to go into micro uh, after a uh, brief summer vacation. So that's what's going on with medical school right now. Um, so the, uh, the only real question that I have or uh, am going to be able to answer this week um, is just going to be one that was uh, sent to me asking about medical journals, uh, like New England Journal of Medicine and uh, different ones like that for uh, pre-meds to read and if I would recommend it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that you go out and get a subscription to one of those. I did that for one year. Uh, it really didn't help me out all that much. I read some of them, most of the stuff that was in them, but I didn't understand what I was reading. So I'm assuming that's most pre-meds the same way. Those, uh, those journals are going to be full of information, and they're great, absolutely great journals. But uh, all the information that's in them, if you haven't exposed to it yet, it just... Uh, looks like a foreign language, you're not going to know what you're reading. So maybe that isn't the best idea. It might be a good idea, um, if you're interested in looking at some of them, to um, maybe Google, uh, you know, hot topics in medicine and then um, find a uh, journal article or two that have those things in them and read them that way and study um, those journals that way. But don't worry about reading them all the time and constantly. Just maybe have a few things in mind when you go to your interview. Um, but even that might be a little above and beyond what you need to do. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, I've come across a few of them um, whenever I've been doing research for different projects for school. Uh, the New England Journal of Medicine is one that I use a whole lot for doing research and stuff like that. So that's one that I enjoy, that I, uh, that I like. I don't have a subscription to it right now because we get through the library. But that's one that I've come across a bit that um, is used quite extensively. So that's a really good one. This is the New England Journal of Medicine, and they have things on uh, just about anything that's in there. So, uh, so that will be my recommendation for that. So uh, that's about it for the uh, questions for right now. Uh, there was another question about the, uh, the coffee that was in the uh, Day in the Life video, the uh, 8 o'clock coffee, um, whatever it is. I bought that coffee from Walmart. It was really cheap, so I just picked it up. I needed something. It was late at night whenever I went. So, uh, But it's pretty good. I like it. Um, that's about it for, uh, for the update and for um, your questions. Um, I'll probably be checking back in and doing another one of these Monday right before the test, uh, when I should be just about finished studying. So that's, uh, that's all for that. So I guess we'll move on to the, uh, medical fact of the week, the random medical fact of the week. Uh, and this is, uh, still kind of all along the same kind of lines what we talked about last week with the random medical fact is, uh, since we're in psychiatry and we're going over, uh, drugs of abuse and stuff right now, um, I figured I would go ahead and use one of those for the random medical fact. Um, and all the, um... All the illegal drugs are bad. They can all cause problems. They all have uh, addiction tendencies and uh, impacts on the brain or cognitive function, etc. But one of the ones that's considered the most dangerous by uh, professionals um, in the field of uh, drug abuse is uh, methamphetamine, crystal meth, whatever you want to call it, speed, those kind of things. Uh, specifically, this chemical, uh, if you don't know, is made from um, a whole host of different uh, chemicals like... Um, uh, household cleaners and uh, over-the-counter medications, and it's basically cooked in a lab um, uh, by uh, people that don't know anything about chemistry. So these things are usually full of all sorts of little side products that are just as dangerous as the actual drug is itself. So this is a very dangerous drug. Uh, but the uh, random medical fact of the week has to do with this drug, and um, the uh, this is the only drug of abuse, as it's uh, as it's typically known. Also, that drugs of abuse will cause violent tendencies in individuals um, and cause aggression uh, and people just do a whole lot of crazy things. But uh, methamphetamine is the only drug of abuse that has shown to uh, create an equal tendency in both men and women for violence and aggression. 
So this is the only one that will cause women to be just as violent and aggressive as men. So uh, methamphetamine is definitely very, very dangerous. If you have anyone uh, that you're close to or you yourself or anyone else that is uh, on, this, on this drug or uh, is thinking about trying this drug, don't do it. It's highly addictive. Uh, another big thing that causes this thing this is the second little uh, random medical fact uh, for this drug causes it to be so severe um, and uh, dangerous is that it's uh, it's the drug that actually actually eats away at your brain. If you take a uh, an MRI or a uh, CT of someone that is on uh, methamphetamine, uh, over time, chronic use, they're going to develop huge holes um, where parts of their brain have been eaten away, and they're going to lose their cortex. And with that goes any possibility of uh, ir it's uh, of um, a reversible brain damage. It's it's completely gone. It eats away at it. They whatever they have when they stop using the drug, that's the defects they have for the rest of their life, and that's part of the reason why it kills them. Uh, it makes them go um, just completely uh, way out there, um, beyond help uh, with this. So it's a huge, uh, huge issue. Um, very, very dangerous drug. I rec I, uh, I recommend if you know anyone that has. Uh, any experience with this or is taking anything like this, encourage them to stop and to seek treatment and you yourself stay away from things like this. So that's uh, that's the random medical fact of the week. So, um, you know, send me your questions, um, uh, comments, uh, anything like that to uh, to me here and I'll get, I'll get to them and answer them. So um, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.